Good morning. I'm Scott Partington, and this is Channel One News. In today's special report, we will be looking into recent advancements in the world of chemistry. Whether you know it or not, chemistry affects your daily life in many ways. Understanding chemistry helps provide a better understanding for the world around us. Scientists are constantly making new discoveries that further these understandings. In today's special report, we will take a closer look at recent advancements in technologies in the world of chemistry. Stay tuned for reports on more efficient solar cells and the possible addition of a new element to the periodic table. But first, let's check in with our local correspondent, Jonathan Gomes Selman, who has a developing story at Cornell University. Hello, I'm Jonathan Gomes Selman. Today we are here at Cornell University in front of the Hall for Applied Physics. This has been the site of a recent new discovery in material science made by Pin Sheng Wong and Professor David Mueller, who discovered a revolutionary piece of glass only one molecule thick. This new discovery has received worldwide publicity and is already featured in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's thinnest piece of glass made by humans. My advisor has collaborators in Germany at the University of Ulm, and they came to do a different experiment on our microscope, but they had a little bit of extra time and they said, hey, maybe we'll stick this in too. There's some funny gunk on top of the graphene, and maybe we can find out what that is. Um, and so we put it in the microscope and we started taking pictures, and my boss walked in and he said, that looks like my material science textbook. And we opened it up and it actually, there's a model called Zachariasen's model, which tells us what glass is supposed to look like. And it looked exactly the same as our images, so we got really excited about that. It's so special about this material, and what can we learn from this discovery? Yeah, well, um, I would say the most remarkable thing about it is its thinness, but it's not, it's not just good because it's thin. The thinness gives us a lot of extra things. So one thing that happens when we're looking at stuff in the microscope is we're actually taking a picture. We're taking a picture that is just a two-dimensional picture of our material. So if you think about this, um, and you just put it down and projected an image on it, oops, sorry. <laughs> no. um, you would get, you know, like your polarite. It's a two-dimensional thing. And luckily, this is two-dimensional, so you see everything in it. Normally, glass is three-dimensional, so there are atoms here, there are atoms there, and there are atoms kind of all over the place. So when you um, take a picture of it, you don't actually see what's going on. You just see kind of a random jumble everywhere. And so people have been trying for a long time to figure out what the structure of glass was. And it wasn't until we could see this thing that is simpler in two dimensions um, that we could actually go in and see where the atoms are. Um, a couple of other things you can do with a two-dimensional glass is um, because it's so, it's actually the thinnest that you can make glass without having, um, without changing its properties. So if you think of things like a transistor or, you know, these things in, in, in your computer, these silicon transistors, um, they typically use a thin layer of glass. But when you make that kind of glass really thin, um, you start to it has surfaces where it has to bond with other things. Um, so this is the thinnest you can make glass, and um, yet all of its bonds are connected to each other. So it's a perfect glass that's thin. Um, so you can actually uh, think of making super thin transistors that have really high quality instead of the poor quality you would get from just taking a normal glass and thinning it down. Okay, so finally, it was just, could you like describe a little how you got involved in applied? physics yourself and how you got the interest initially? Hmm. That's a little bit hard to pin down. Um, so, um, so in college I think I was interested in a lot of things and physics was definitely one of them. 
Um, I really like other physicists. People often say physicists are awkward or weird or strange. Um, and that is definitely the case for some people, but they're also some of the most interesting people I know. They're just, they're just fun people to work with, and science is very collaborative, so I get to feel like I'm solving interesting problems about the world, and then also working with these really smart and talented people. Um, yeah, so, so that's definitely part of it. Um, there's also a spiel that I give about material science. So um, I study materials. I think they're really interesting um, because everything around us is made out of atoms, and I can actually zoom in and look at those atoms and, and understand why different materials are different. Um, there are things that are also really tangible for the world. So if you think of things like the Stone Age and the Bronze Age, those are eras in history that are actually named after materials because they changed our lives in prehistoric times. And I think today that's, that's still the case, that material science is a really important thing. Um, so for example, your iPhone, um, computers, all of that is the new materials that we're working on today. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem, it's my pleasure. Channel One News would like to thank Pin Shan Wan for that exclusive interview. And now, on to the rest of our special report. Scientists may be adding a new element to the periodic table thanks to new work led by Swedish physicists. This new, super heavy chemical element has 115 protons, filling a gap in the periodic table between 114 and 116, two elements that were added just last year. The new element was produced by a group led by Lund University physicists. Their experiment replicated results of previous experiments performed by Russian and American scientists 10 years ago. To create the element, calcium nuclei were fired at americium atoms. Every once in a while, the two would merge together, creating an element with 115 protons. However, this new element is very unstable and collapsed in less than a second. Researchers were only able to confirm the element's existence from the debris it left behind. If the data proves convincing, this short-lived element will become a permanent lifetime member of the periodic table. Thanks for having me, Scott. My name is Alejandro Cerveto, I'm, and I'm here to report a very exciting advancement in solar cell technology that leaves the future of renewable energy even brighter. A team of scientists at Nanyang Technological University have found out that a simple crystalline structure called a perovskite may be the key to advancing our ability to harness the sun's power. A perovskite is a very easy to make structure that is made of two elements and an anion that bonds with the two of them. In fact, making a perovskite solar cell is five times cheaper than our current solar cell. Perovskites currently have a 15% sunlight to energy conversion rate, but we know exactly how to make them and how they work, so scientists are working on, enhancement, on enhancing their efficiency. In the near future, they hope to reach a 20% rate. Given what they know about the structure, this hope isn't very far-fetched. After all, it's not rocket science. <laughs> Stay classy, Ithaca, New York. This has been a special report from Alejandro Cervet. And that wraps up our special report. For Channel 1 News, I'm Scott Partington, signing out.